Good morning, everyone. <laughs> it's early morning here. <laughs> Gus. And Gus is awake just as I am. And sorry about the light. This is what we got out here. But I got people sleeping in the house. I don't want to wake them up. I need talking. Our house is really open. Yeah, it's a huge house. and It's open everywhere. So, oh my gosh, you're going, you're going to come. <laughs> what is this? Huh? You're going to come in my lap? How many pounds are you? About 150 now? Man, that's a lot of weight on my on my uh, sore legs, they all, huh? He says, just just block me a little bit. Just just I just want to get Yeah. He's still a puppy. Children just love to be hugged and that's right? it's the same for puppies, huh? It just it, that's their communication to us, right? That's the best they have to give. Huh? Their affection. For us, right? Yes. One should never right, reject a hug or when a child comes, wants to be with us for a while. Right? Oh, the puppy. Eh? Yeah. But right, this is bad timing. <laughs> Regardless. All right. All right, go on. Go on. <laughs> Let me make the video, then we'll have some more time to... Pa oh, oh, look, there's a little moth crawling on my blanket. Let's get the moth up. Don't want to get off here. I don't like to kill things like this. They don't hurt us or nothing. There, one would just swat it, right? No need to do that. Yeah, certain th other things. I, uh, I went upstairs night before last and I had a little juice left in the glass that I had up there and I, my room's quite dark too I have two lights in there but no overhead light so I turned on the little night lamp and I'm going oh I'll finish that right now and I drank it and then I looked uh, in the glass I saw something even though it was kind of dark I saw something in and I brought it over to the light and there were two yellow jackets in there I'm going, whoa, holy cannoli, was I just lucky? <laughs> and it kind of just went through my mind, and I, oh my gosh, what if both of them would have ended up in my mouth? Which could, could have happened, right? But it didn't. They could have stung my lip. They could have, right? I'm just saying, they were both alive still. How did they get up there? Well, we have the door. We have the door open now a lot because it's just so nice and it airs out the house really good, right? So, but there are still bugs. Right? How do they find a little bit of juice like that, right? Their scent must be phenomenal. Well, anyway, so I just, oh my gosh. So I didn't want them to just fly out and then I have them in the room, right? While I'm sleeping, huh? And uh, so I put a little water in it. I went into bed and then I la laid there, just marveled over the sheer luck uh, I just had, if you want to call it that, or protection. That could have caused some serious problems if I would have got them things in my mouth and then go, oh, what is that? You know, and, ah, right? <laughs> yeah, okay. And I got back up. I thought, well, I'm not going to let them drown in that water. Man, it didn't hurt me, right? I'm lucky they didn't hurt me, but they didn't hurt me. So I opened up the window and I poured out the water with the two yellow jackets who were still alive out on the on the, on the the roof right? where, okay, you're on your own now, but at least you're not drowning, right? Yeah, a little thank you. Oh, thanks for not <laughs> getting into my mouth. Which, oh my gosh, it was one of those things. What do you say, huh? A relationship with God. You know, I grew up Catholic, and well, the way I grew up, yeah, we didn't, there's no, gosh, my mom didn't have time for politics and all that. Growing up in Switzerland, where most, yeah, most of the country is Catholic, if people did believe anything there were churches everywhere there's some beautiful churches and all that and you grow up in a household where mom just had, had a good life of faith 
then you're not pulled into all this other stuff, right? That may be going on. And, uh, you know, but as I got older, again, uh, there were just some things that I'd say, whoa, wait a second. Uh, one, one thing that when I was still a child, I was going to, I don't know, 13 maybe now, 12. There was a story going around. We had a, a, a priest that was... A really good priest. Everybody liked him. He was a really sweet guy, this, that. And uh, he got arrested for drinking and driving with children in the car. And uh, I thought, wow, that's, I mean, no matter how nice you are, why would you do that? And being a priest, that's not, I, I, I don't care. If he wants to have his schnapps or beer, whatever he's got at home, but to drive, be drunk and drive and have children in the car. Okay, he wasn't what you're thinking now. That was not, he was not, he was a, he was a real, he was, he was a great priest. People loved listening to him. He made it interesting, right? But uh, there was this one thing about him that, I mean, that's how irresponsible can you get? Anyway, so I was really disappointed. I couldn't figure out on how a person would be able to give the word of God so well, but then make decisions in his own life with other people that were so bad, right? Yes. Okay. So then the things went on and then you hear more about the Catholic church, uh, you know, just awful things. You wonder, well, can that be true? <laughs> you know? Can this be true? The first time I heard on how many pedophiles there are in the Catholic Church and how they were not, okay, uh, taken to court or anything, but the Vatican kind of just shoveled it under the rug. They ended up just being put in another parish where, what, they can, what, do, 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 does the Pope or any of these cardinals or the bishops think if they give these priests a good talking to, they'll never do again what they just did? A horrific thing to children? I mean, hello? Or what, do, they, do they live in la-la land or something? Okay. So, and in any case, I hear that. I just heard another one where within the Vatican, I don't know, I didn't go and check. As I said, you hear the Illuminati, you know, all the horrible things they do. And there too, I said that in another video where, you know, I'm privy of a story where, uh, uh, was it a bishop, I think, he wanted to get married, but he wanted to stay in the Catholic Church as well. Okay, that's kind of uh, just abdicate and go. But they wouldn't let him go. They uh, kidnapped him, you know, in, a, in an underground garage. This, that, okay, all right. Well, I don't know. That was secondhand too. As I'm not sure about the whole story, you know. But So you hear all this stuff and you're going, well, okay. So someone just trying to bring the Catholic Church down, right? Or... Or is there some truth in all that? All right. I think some people try to bring the Catholic Church down. And I also think that there is some truth to the stories, just not all of it in the way that it is portrayed. I've said that in another video. Are we ever... Hello. Good morning. My husband's up. Are we ever going to get the truth in anything anymore? Really? It's all just... Hey, did you hear, supposedly, this and that? And you know, the recent story, which I'm not going to mention what it was about, it's horrific. It's, it's, I don't want to believe, I don't want to believe that, of an outfit that's supposed to right, encourage people to a relationship with God. Well, then I got into the Unification Church, the Family Federation for World Peace now, and one of the things, okay, come on, go, go. Go lay down. Go lay down. The one thing, you see now, what did I say in the beginning of the video? Right away, I'm being put to the test, right? Yes? Mm -hmm. uh, and one of the things in the divine principle, which is, you know, like the third uh, testament age, we have to, yeah, we have the uh, Old Testament, the New Testament, 
and the divine principle, you know, according to my religion, is the completed testament. Oh, it's a wonderful book. It's an amazing book. Okay, I love it. And one of the things in it is the fall, right? the relationship between God, a man and a woman, right? and then a child as well, right? a family. And, uh, oh, my gosh, I'm like, yes, this is the ideal. This is and the reasons for the fall, the reason why human beings fell in the realm of love, and what it takes to restore it. Right? Well, then I started to find out that, you know, the, the leader that I followed, I followed, and it, okay, I like the divine principle. Yeah? If it resonates within my heart to mind and uh, on, on how I, my, my relationship w always has been with spirit world, right? then I had to say, okay, this is where I'm learning from. I will be learning from this, right? But as far as, as I said, do I, do I, do I, yep, just, Am I in a religion? Do I believe in some kind of a religion? Eh? And uh, am a part of something right? that is a greater community? And then I'm just, you know, kind of just taking everything as, well, no, but you would hope that, well, if you're being told that the leader of that organization wrote this book, which I was just amazed over how many answers I got to questions I had all my life. Right? And could, oh, yeah, mm -hmm, yeah, that computes 100%. Then I find out that, oh, he was actually married already beforehand and got divorced. Oh, I thought divorce was a no-no, really. Okay, come on now. Right? And uh, was a no-no. Huh? And, uh, you know, okay, well, there was a good excuse for that. Which, all right, all right, you know, but still, oh, well, he was still learning too, yeah? Restoration. Then you hear that he actually had re a relationship with at least one woman who got pregnant and they weren't married after he got divorced and, and already had written part of the divine principle or something. Well, anyway, okay, you need to go now. Now, go, 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 go. Go now. You're not just asking for it. now. You're getting too assist insistent. There, good boy. Stay. <coughs> go. Go lay down. Go. 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 Uh, let's fix that. Come on. Come on. There. You had. You had lots of. Huh? Yes. And you're not a child. You are a dog after all. I know the difference. Aha! <laughs> no, go lay down. He's all, but, but, but. So, and the woman got pregnant and ran away, and then, okay, well, wait a second. Well, that doesn't compute, right, with, uh, go lay down, go lay down. No, go lay down. Go lay down. Go. And then, uh, what was next? Well, I heard that and gone, holy cannoli, really? And then, uh, you know, he got married again to, uh, to True Mother, who was how many years younger and how old was she? Now, she was legal age, okay? As far as I know, <laughs> things might change there, too. Well, I don't know what legal age was to get married in Korea at the time, but as far as I was told, she was 18. Anywho, so, okay. Then, uh, later on, and now we're talking, okay, we're well into the completed testament age, and he has a concubine and another kid. Well, he's married, so he's having an affair. <laughs> Holy cow, seriously? I mean, and there were other things as well. You know, I had to say, huh, what? I'm not blind to all of that. I wasn't blind to it eventually when I got to be old enough as a child in the Catholic Church. And I'm not blind to it. And what's going on, you know, in the Unification Church, the Family Federation for World Peace, you know, who now has splintered off groups as well, this snat after uh, True Father's death. But there were some things that happened during all that period that I know right, I needed to have. My family needed to have. Okay, like the blessing. So I'm not going to go out. Uh, as I said, 
well, holy cannolis, do as I say, not, not as I do, kind of thing, right? That doesn't sit well with most people. If you have a good heart to mind, that's not a good, right? <laughs> it, the excuses just don't stand anymore, but it's all right. Now, as I said, we can't expect to be yeah, willing to restore our own family and not give the same courtesy to every other family out there. And I believe true families, family needs more restoration than most other families out there. But all the restoration stuff they're going through in a way, all of us can relate to in one way or another with our own families. So, right, yes, doesn't excuse anything. Yeah. But we should have some compassion because we hope that others have that compassion for us as well. So there it is, right? So yeah, I'm no, I'm the divine principle. I think it's the greatest book ever written after the Bible, and uh, I believe in the true parents. I believe in the second coming, and the blessing, the change, the lineage from. Uh, from uh, uh, Satan's lineage yeah, to God's lineage, and everybody should, in a way, try and go and get that. Find a unification church or one of them family federation for world pieces around the world, okay, uh, and uh, and get the blessing. Say, oh, I'll be in the next one, you know, and uh, you know they're gonna ask for money, I guess. This is just say, this is how much you got. Is this enough? Yeah. To, to for for that yeah? we have to pay for a wedding too people are willing to put up 20 30 a hundred thousand dollars for a wedding right well then you know a couple thousand dollars it shouldn't be such a big deal yeah? for to the to the change uh, of God's lineage all right just said that so well how can I be so sure well because I have a relationship with God. When you do that, you care for the rest of humanity out there as well. So, but I had to say this, right? Yeah, because you know, people will come across, and many people in our in our church have been disillusioned by certain things that happen. Well, again, and you have your own heart to mind. You got your own your own uh, personality. You're an individual, and if you give that up to someone else who then takes absolute 100% control over you and then you get disappointed over that, well, whose fault is that? Eh? Yes? Okay. Doesn't mean that everything was bad. So, we're on 21. The birth of Isaac. Well, there you go. Yahweh treated Sarah as he had said and did what he had promised her. Sarah conceived and bore Abraham a son in his old age, at the time God had promised. Abraham named the son born to him Isaac, the son to whom Sarah had given birth. Abraham circumcised his son Isaac. Well, just inflict pain on a tiny little baby right away after you just had this little miracle. I just love it. It's just, oh my gosh, barbarians, barbarians, done. When he was eight day, eight days old, look at this, poor little thing. As God had commanded him, yeah, right, I don't believe that. It just had their own little thing going, you know. He, he. Abraham was a hundred years old when his son Isaac was born to him. Sarah said, God has given me cause to laugh. All who hear about this will laugh with me. Why do you think she was laughing? Out of joy? Or out of, ha, 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 now, see, you all who said I was barren. Hey, you know, yeah, well, one can look at it any way, which way you want, the way it is said. It wasn't, God has given me cause to joy. It doesn't say that. She added, whoever would have told Abraham that Sarah would nurse children, yet I have born, ha, 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 a son in his old age. There you go. Wasn't I right? Hey. People and their attitude towards all and anything. Unbelievable. And here it is in Genesis. Started all there. The dismissal of, ah, here we go now. Mm -hmm. Another proud moment in the Bible. The dismissal of Hagar and Ishmael. You know, I'm just going to read through that. I'm not even going to say anything because all I can tell you is 
this is like you want to see my hackles go up that, that over that would be it so uh, the child grew and was weaned and abraham gave a great banquet on the day isaac was weaned <laughs> now sarah <laughs> that's a new one to me oh uh, little isaac what he's two years old three years old is becoming a man now he didn't need the boob anymore or something okay daniela what did you just say before i know now Sarah watched a son that Hagar, the Egyptian, had borne to Abraham playing with her son Isaac. Drive away that slave girl and her son, she said to Abraham. This slave girl's son is not to share the inheritance with my son Isaac. That is so sad. I had to say that. This greatly distressed Abraham because the slave girl's child too was his son. But God said to him, ah, need an excuse here. But God said, oh yeah, uh-huh. Well, here we go. Do not distress yourself on account of the boy and your slave girl. Do whatever Sarah says, for Isaac is the one through whom your name will be carried on. But the slave girl's son I shall also make into a great nation, for he too is your child. Well, if any of that is true, as I said, God could already see this is going to turn into a big old mess, and then I'll have to turn myself away from it and lose again everything I prepared for 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 you know my children, my lineage instead of right? and here is man, Satan obviously, and God says, well, what do I do? Well, I'm I'm just going to have to make sure everybody's all right, and the best thing is to separate. But how sad. I don't think that really was God's desire that it would happen like that. And yet, having to deal with people, mankind, man, that has to be. Oh, you know what? We all know how that feels like when you're a parent, you have more. Yeah, some, I don't know, some parents may have absolutely 100% had great children, never a problem, this and that. You know. But as far as I know, there is always at least one, if not two, that it just give you, I'm not saying they're bad children, they give you heartache. A lot of it. A lot of it. So here we go. Oh my gosh, this, this story just it tears me up every time. I hear it, I read it, it tears me up. Ech. Again. Why am I even reading this? Ah, you see, that's why I talked about what I talked about beforehand. Why am I even reading this? This is a... Come on now. Really? Eh? <laughs> Abraham took some bread. Early next morning, Abraham took some bread and a skin of water and giving them to Hagar. But the child on her shoulder put the child on her shoulder and sent her away. She wandered off into the desert of Bathsheba. When the skin of water was finished, she abandoned the child under a bush. Then she went and sat down at a distance about a bow shot away, thinking, I cannot bear to see the child die. <sighs> Sitting at a distance, she began to sob. God heard the boy crying. <laughs> I thought he'd already had it all figured out that, you know. <clears throat> well, but the suffering still had to go on first. You know how many people suffer for other people's baloney, huh? Yeah. Hagar and Ishmael suffered for the baloney of Abraham and Sarah. Very sad. And all just because the two boys were what? Playing together. Well, it says right there. Whatever. Jeez. God heard the boy crying, and the angel of God called to Hagar from heaven. What is wrong, Hagar? <laughs> You're like, you don't know. He asked, do not be afraid, for God has heard the boy cry in his plight. Go and pick the boy up and hold him safe, for I shall make him into a great nation. And God opened Hagar's eyes, and she saw a, a well. So she went and filled the skin with water and gave the boy a drink. God was with the boy. He grew up and made his home in the desert, and he became an archer. He made his home in the desert of Paran, and his mother got him a wife from Egypt. 
Now, there you go. I wouldn't want one of them people from Abraham and Sarah either to be the wife of my son after the way they were treated. <laughs> well, anyway, this is a really sad story to me. Oh, wait a minute. There's a little bit more. Oh, here's Abimelech again. Oh, I was just done after that. It's like, I don't even want to read anymore. Ugh, so disappointed in this story. You know, and people can tell. He says, yeah, but you know, that had a reason for this. And for that. Yeah, you know what? You can stick those reasons where the sun don't shine. I don't want to hear it. The excuses that go with stuff like that, I don't want to hear it. How about that? Okay? You're not going. This is when you have a relationship with God. You're not going to be bamboozled eh, by evil. There. Abraham and Abimelech at Beersheba. About ten, about then, Abimelech and Pichol, the commander of his army, said to Abraham, Since God is with you in everything you do, swear to me by God, here and now, that you will not act treacherously towards me or my kith and kin. <coughs> oh, but behave with the same faithful love to me and the land of which you are a guest, as I have behave to you. Yes, Abraham replied, I swear it. See, uh, if you really trust a friend, you don't have to ask, are you going to betray me? Uh, Abimelech wasn't so sure because he's already had his experiences with Abraham. I'm telling you. Abraham then repro <laughs> reproached Abimelech about a well that Abimelech's servants had seized. I do not know who has done this, Abimelech said. You yourself have never mentioned it to me, and, and for myself, I heard nothing of it till today. Ah, you know what? Sounds like Abraham had to give up the well in order for, huh? Who? Who? Hagar and his son Ishmael, who were dying of thirst. Ah, interesting. Balance. Abraham then took sheep and cattle and presented them to Abimelech, and the two of them made a covenant. Abraham put seven lambs of the flock on one side. Why have you put these seven lambs on one side? Abimelech asked Abraham. He replied, you must accept these seven lambs from me as evidence that I have dug this well. This was why the place was called Beersheba, because there the two of them swore an oath. After they had made a covenant at Beersheba, Abimelech and Pichol, the commander of his army, left and went back to Philistine territory. And Abraham planted a tamarisk at Beersheba, and there he invoked the name of Yahweh. Abraham stayed for a long while in Philistine territory. Well, anyway... Ah, one can look at this any which way. Oh, God was expanding his. To, he was making sure. I don't know, you guys. I said, it sounds to me like a lot of these stories are put in there for, I don't know. Oh, well, invoke the, the name of Yahweh. Oh, this is blessed all for you. Blah, 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 this and that. But really, when it comes down to it, hmm, well, it was really Abraham's heart. I don't know. Wheeling and dealing. Anyway. But again. Eh? We're all trying. We'll make mistakes and we're all trying. I find it interesting though. If you have made a mistake once. Right. That wasn't a good thing for yourself or the people around you, and you hurt people. You shouldn't do it again. If you do it again, eh, then you are blatantly eh, telling everyone around you, I don't care. So be it. Eh? And people have to accept that. But then one shouldn't be surprised when you get treated in a way where, yeah, 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 okay, I hear you. I know what you're saying, but... Can I trust you? <laughs> right? Just that, like Abimelech said. <laughs> I don't know about you. <laughs> 
And Abraham, you know, kind of enforced that, uh, well, you have to swear to me. Right? And then, uh, yeah, pulling God into it. Uh, God's often misused in many different situations. Uh, I don't know, so God, people can feel better. Uh, yeah, invoke fear or something. Uh, God doesn't work that way either. Well, anyway, this is our morning reading, Bible reading. It's just getting light out there. Can you see over there? Yeah. It's pretty. You can't see. All you can see is blue. But I can see different colors already. There's a, a real small strip right over the ridge there, by, right by the ridge that is get, it's lighter. It's getting lighter just a tiny bit. Yeah. All right. Well, that's what I have to share today. God's love and blessings always. Now, we'll talk to y'all another time. Oh, you know, elections are coming up, aren't they? Ah, interesting Bible readings we're having. 